Hello viewers, Super GT here, welcome back to another video. Okay, so this one, this this lobby that I joined here late on a Sunday night, produced some really good racing. Also, plenty of Shadow Realm entries, people getting sent into another dimension left, right and centre. We're going to get straight into it, let's get straight to the point, shall we? Because this was, this was a really good race, this first one. So we're going to start in 6th position, our favourite place, but we're going to try and move forward from here. Now, let's uh, give you a bit of background about this race. Daily race B from last week. Five laps around Maggiore, one of the shorter configurations. And it's a group four. Most people opting, as you can see, for the Subaru WRX. It seemed to be the best car for this race. And one of the things about this track is this final corner. Very big braking zone into a very sharp corner. And in... My experience of racing games, that is often the prime recipe for carnage. And that proved to be true over the course of this this race, this lobby, this session, whatever you want to call it, this video. Now, around the outside through turn one into turn two, um, that guy there, just leaving the door open, really. And we move up into fifth. Overtaking, really, um, around the circuit... It's a good track for overtaking. Lots of very big overtaking opportunities, not least the final corner, where you can dive up the inside quite easily. Multiple lines available. Um, we're going to have to do some more overtaking here because we're still only in fifth, and there's four cars in front of us. That's four too many, obviously. So coming down into this downhill weird hairpin, very weird corner, that. But you do have to get it right as you run up towards the S's. Another crucial, uh, crucial section as it runs out into the back straight leading into the final corner so I need to get this bit right getting two wheels across there and here as we run out onto the straight now getting very close indeed we can definitely go for a move here in towards the final turn he's going to go semi-defensive but we're still going to look up the inside head towards the apex first get there don't overshoot park it on the apex the old switcheroo is denied and we've gained two positions absolutely savage dive bomb but I mean pulled it off to perfection really so no complaint can be had in towards turn one now it's really a case of trying to reel in the Russian just in front and reel out the two guys behind that's not really a turn is it I'm just, I'm just talking crap now um, try to get away from the guys behind now through here plenty of uh, track limit abuse well I mean technically you're well within the track limits there but it looks kind of silly at the end of lap four with the finished driver in tow just behind we managed to have a very good braking zone here into the final corner and as a result of that we do gain a couple of turns and get within slipstream range of the Russian who could possibly be Vladimir Putin in his downtime you, you never you never really know do you um, but if it is him, then I'm sure he's going to try to make himself as wide as possible to defend his position. As um, we're still not really close enough to go for a move here. This is definitely too far back. We're in slipstream range, but not overtaking range. So really, this, this lap boils down to getting a little bit closer to give ourselves a chance into the final corner. That is basically the, the uh, name of the game right now. As we head down towards this corner, braking just at the end of that grey kerb on the left, letting the car coast in, then back on the power by the time we get to the kerb. Back over to the right-hand side. Not, I'm not going to be able to overtake through this section, but it's really about getting this section right so that we get momentum onto the back straight. So again, taking plenty of liberties with track limits, but unfortunately, a little bit too much. As you see here, just, just leaving myself on the curb a little bit too long before rejoining the circuit and boom before you know it you're slapped with a penalty by the stewards and well I mean I can't really have any complaints I did cut the corner and it's just a, uh, just a bit frustrating for it to happen that late when we had a chance of going for second we're going to try and get past him anyway it's not going to count because we are going to have that serve, uh, going to have to serve the penalty and that is going to demote us ultimately to fourth which was a bit disappointing. We had some good momentum in that race. Started sixth. Could have finished second. 
but ultimately end up fourth. But it was positive. We had some we had some good moments there, good pace. We improved our qualifying time here, just chipping away at our qualifying qualifying time bit by bit. It wasn't quite enough though because even despite setting a decent time, 22.6, you can see just how close and competitive the grid is here. If I was just over a tenth faster, I would have been third on the grid. So a tenth separates myself and the five cars in front. So this is a very competitive lobby. Lots of very closely matched drivers in very close proximity to each other. And when you, when you combine that with the aforementioned features of this circuit, aka a big braking zone into a sharp corner which is the final corner then you're just asking for trouble and this race very much was trouble it looked very calm and serene at this point but that's because there's a rolling start everyone starts a bit further apart but once we all became an almighty gaggle and got a bit too close for comfort then that's when things really began to become unhinged so first lap it's really a case of just don't do anything stupid try and catch up a little bit with the car in front it's it's quite hard to overtake on this first lap you're really just gaining the gap that you start the race with but i am beginning to immediately spot that the cars in front so the two yellow then there's a green one they are beginning to get quite close and therefore they are moving across the circuit as well they are going to start fighting and that is going to mean that we're going to catch up this is going to become a very close-knit community if you like. So we get a good exit there, a good run against J Bay Racing. We're going to move to the left. He's got the slipstream though, so I'm not really going to be able to get much of an overlap. We're going to tuck back in for a second go. And they tuck back out to go up the inside in towards turn one. Now again, lots of fighting up ahead. We're going to go around the outside here, give them some space. And there's a tiny bit of contact, but we're through up into eighth. Look how close this battle is for third place. There's about f there's five cars there fighting for that position. This is going to get very, very tasty indeed. The top two just beginning to pull away uh, slightly ahead, but they're still not too far ahead, to be honest. Now, coming down here, I'm not, I'm not close enough. I could probably defend, but I don't, really, I don't really want to lose too much time. So I'm just going to take the normal racing line and see if we can catch up as, quick, as quickly as possible. And then the finish driver just gets shoved out wide. We're going to cut back, go to the inside and take seventh position here. The Russian there, uh, Vladimir Putin, actually moves up into third position. I think he gained like three positions on that corner. And all of a sudden, we're in the thick of battle here. And this is where things can get very, very tasty indeed. So coming in towards the final corner, we're going to look up the inside of this guy. We're going to go three, four abreast temporarily, if you looked at the radar there. The finish driver overtaking all three of us, and moving from eighth to fifth and uh, very, from 9th to 5th so good job from him and I'm currently in 6th I'm going to have to defend this position with 3 nearly 4 abreast here towards the first corner and I just have to make sure I secure this position I have thankfully so that Croatian driver and the Czech driver behind engaging in, in battle and losing many positions they were well up in the position but then they, they were just fighting way too much and suddenly began to uh, drop positions. Now it's a case of just trying to pull away from that group and try to make some forward progress. If we can do that, that would be fantastic. The top two, again, not too far away. Uh, still fighting away at the front of the pack. Going to have to try and get a good run here. You see the finish driver doesn't take the first part of the S too well. That means we get some good momentum here. Onto the straight. We've timed this momentum perfectly. We're going to tuck to the right-hand side. He didn't defend it. Looking for our braking zone just after the 100 board. And then we're going to get into the apex nicely and reclaim fifth position. So th this is a, a very important lap, lap uh, four out of five just coming up. I just need to make sure I have a perfect lap here and try to try to reel in the two in front. And it didn't really take too much for that to happen because as you can see, both of them, the pair of them began to engage in what closely resembles World War Three. As we develop through this lap, you'll see that they really develop a very close disliking for each other and be uh, begin to start punting each other out of the way. So no love lost here between the French driver and the Russian driver. But we have a good 
good chance of finishing third. Driver behind with a penalty. Frenchman uh, going very defensive here. Let's see how this one develops. I've, I've taken note that they are very aware of each other, these two. So I don't really want to get caught up in their conflict. And this is a very much a theme of Gran Turismo. It's very much a theme of online racing. You see two people, they, they clearly want to knock seven shades out of each other. You just have to make sure that you don't get caught up in that. So as we come up towards the final corner, let's see what happens. The Frenchman goes very defensive. Russian as well goes to the inside. We're going to go to the outside and try the old switcheroo. And it works to perfection. Absolutely insanely beautiful move. We move up into third. We start in ninth. That's up six. Can we catch up with the top two? Might be a bit of a stretch. But we have actually caught up with the top two since the start of the race. But coming towards the first corner, the Russian just lunges out of nowhere. The Frenchman comes in with a big old airstrike and smashes into the side of the Russian, who then in turn smashes into the side of me. We're going to lose a position. The Finnish driver just drives through the lot of us with his penalty, but he's going to actually be able to secure third place. So a bit of, bit of um, a moment of mayhem, it's fair to say there, <laughs> at the first corner. And uh, now, all of a sudden... I do have a bit of a gap to the guys behind, but they're still going to engage in conflict just behind. It's my job really just to stay out of firing range and make sure that I can just bring home fourth. I don't think I'm going to be able to get third back now. And into the final corner. Thankfully, I'm far away enough. I'm out of range. I can't, prob I can't be rammed from this far away. So it's going to be a fourth place. Still a great result. We started ninth. Probably should have been a third given we got up into third at one point but but there you go it's going to be a fourth place what we are going to do is something we sometimes do on this channel which is a bit of a post-mortem analysis and just see how people's races died see how their hopes and dreams evaporated here's the Russian going up the inside wide Putin um, smashing his way through up into third now we're going to look on board with a French driver here and see how this see how these petty battles began see he was very trigger happy with the the big overtakes and here this i mean this was just pure filth russian wasn't having any of it just come straight back in that's how i caught up as you can see just behind this is where he defends goes very narrow as he's titled to do the russian kind of just nudges him wide and that's obviously where he took a fence and then just pushes him into the fence and then this is the, yes, that's, that's the, um, the big ramming attack, the assault at turn one. And then, I don't know if this is a case of mistaken identity, or he just has something against pink or purple cars, but he smashes into the back of J-Bay, who is totally neutral in all of this, pushes him through a couple of positions there. And then at the end of the race, I think he's maybe trying to target the Russian, but he just ends up killing J-Bay instead. So again, I don't know if he just hates pink and purple cars or if it was mistaken identity or what, I don't know. But here's how j Bay's race went. I found this quite interesting actually watching back through this. This is lap two. He's just behind me here. This is when I went for the move on the finish driver. It all got a bit choked up a bit later, but he managed to follow me through this group past the Czech and the Croatian driver. And then this is where things really descended for him. Because coming down into this downhill hairpin, the pair of them again still going at it, hammer and tong. And he gets double overtaken there. So the momentum in his race just really got killed at this point. He, he looked like he was going to follow me through, but then that happened. And then this is where things really descend into anarchy. As uh, again, you can see what I mean. The Croatian and the Czech driver just, they clearly hate each other. I don't know if there's been any big wars between those two countries or something. But... Um, clearly no love lost on the uh, Gran Turismo battlefield. As we come in towards the uh, final corner, it goes up the inside. Oh my goodness, big lunge out of nowhere. And he actually gets the position. So he's in an okay position there. He managed to get away from that group. Thankfully for him, managed to, manages to escape. And then this is where he catches up. This is where the Frenchman goes on the rampage into the first corner. And that's where he catches up. And he's all of a sudden in a big battle for fourth when it looked like he was getting in, uh, murdered in a battle for ninth. 
that's where the Frenchman rams him. The Russian obviously thought that, the Russian obviously didn't know that the Frenchman punted him in there. And then this is where he just gets unceremoniously murdered. And uh, probably that, I mean, that's so bad that that Frenchman should probably just actually go to prison in real life. But anyway, um, as a result of all of that, I decided to change my livery to the classic 555 one. Okay, so surely now, with this livery, I should be able to set a better lap, but no, really it was a case of restarting about 8 million times. I seem to reach a kind of limit around 122.6, but then I, ma I managed to chip away a massive quarter of a tenth before then joining the third race. Actually, this was the third race after the disconnect. And as you can see, we're going to start third on the grid. Now, the thing I was very wary about on this one was the fact that the two guys in front were in the same team, GTD, uh, both from Italy. So I'm always conscious of these little things, these little factors. Perhaps you just never know. They might be on a group chat, party chat together, talking with each other. Nothing wrong with that, but you just have to be aware that they could be working together in some way. Not a bad, not a bad thing. It's just that you might have more, more work cut out in order to try to beat them both. So I was aware that obviously I had to try to really get past this guy in second, and then very quickly try to uh, get into the lead before they both could, uh, you know, attack me at the same time. So coming round onto the back straight, end of lap number two. Not quite close enough to go for this move. He's going to go half defensive. We're going to look. Uh, for the deep line and maybe go for the, uh, the old uh, switcheroo. It doesn't quite work there, but we are uh, probing at second place for the time being. We've still got three laps, though, to try to do it. And here, he breaks a little bit early, and I, I, I didn't really even want to go for that move, um, but I kind of had to go for the space, otherwise I, I would have hit him. Uh, so we're going to have to settle into third here. And the only thing that really has done is knock him out of the slipstream range. So now it's actually going to be easy to overtake it. So onto this back straight here. We're going to look potentially for this move. As uh, we look behind the X power, Vladimir Putin lurking ominously in the near distance just behind. He's going to go defensive. So obviously he has quite a defensive mindset. And that um, has actually proven to be his downfall there. As he goes in too narrow, comes out too wide and then I can get the, the cut back on the exit. So now this is a very important phase of the race because I need to break away from that guy and get onto the back of the leader who is about nine tenths ahead. I just need to gain about two more tenths and then we'll be back into the slipstream range and there won't be such a sitting duck for this guy behind. I'm gonna try and break the toe. In fact, actually looking behind, he has Vladimir Putin for company. So that's actually a good thing for me. So good on the brakes there and we actually managed to get back into the slipstream so that's good as we um, now look at her uh, now we I can't even get my words out we now look at uh, midway through lap number four we've isolated the leader of the race here and we have a, we have a chance of going for the victory uh, so the steady progression for the races we started the first one in sixth finished fourth then we started ninth and finished fourth this one we're going to look up the inside looking for the lead and it didn't quite work out i was up the inside i hit the apex and i think there's a bit of a nudge but we're going to continue here with one more lap left to go can we get past the italian and finally win this race looking up the inside just trying to put him off and again he breaks quite early and i didn't i didn't really want to go for that move but the, these guys are breaking a little bit early into that first corner but okay we're just going to stick behind I'm going to try and get this job done at some point on this lap and we, I'd say we have two more big overtaking opportunities uh, the first of which will be at the end of this straight here let's see if he defends if we can make him defend that would be great because we could potentially get the overtake on the exit he's going to go narrow we're going to move to the outside as late as possible to get him to go narrow can we get this overtake done we have got momentum here but it's not quite going to be, a, be enough I'm going to move to the left as you can see, he's, he's quite confident that he's, I'm not going to go for that move, and rightly so. I wasn't really within range to go for that, as it wasn't really much of a... Uh, there's not much of a break for that corner. 
But here I just go a little bit too wide and you see there it opens up a couple of tents. Crucial couple of tents. Coming into the final lap. The final corner of the final lap. I'm not really close enough to go for this move. So all I can do is maybe hope he goes defensive, which he does. Try to get a switch back. And it doesn't quite work. So just a couple of little mistakes there as I try to go for this move and try to win the race. But again, still decent progression. Started at third. We're going to finish second in a very close battle for first. So still very good fun. Very good fun indeed. We're going to finish that one in second. But I, again, wanted to improve my qualifying time. As you can see, my optimum lap time was a 22.3. So if I combine all of the best sectors I've ever done into one lap, I could potentially do a 22.3. I'm stuck on a 22.5 at this point. But here was my fastest lap that I managed to that I managed to do. So very neat and tidy through turn one and turn two. It's really about keeping things very smooth indeed. Getting on the power very early, especially in group four cars. You don't uh, get too much uh, wheel spin on the exit of corners given the amount of power and the weight of the cars. So you can get on the power very, very early indeed. And at this point here, I'm a tenth up on my best ever sec uh, best ever lap time around here. So that's a good sign. If I can just keep this up to the end, then I'm going to improve by a tenth. So let's just see if we can get this section here nicely done on the power nicely. Again, you just have to abuse the track limits for this bit and this bit here onto the back straight. Slight bit slower through the second sector. But we are still overall about three quarters of a tenth faster. So I just need to make sure I get this final corner correct. And then we, we are on for a decent improvement. Which should see me potentially uh, start in higher positions on the grid. So that was a decent final corner. Felt good. I'm not, I'm not sure at this point if it's going to improve. But as we uh, cross the line, we go from a 5.6 to a 4.79. And that is a solid improvement. So chipping away almost a tenth. Before moving into the final race of the video. Now, you notice that we are using the replay camera because me being me, it didn't record properly and I had to go back and record it. But still, you get the point. You get the gist of the race. This was a very, very entertaining race. Really, really enjoyed this one. So, again, starting third, like we did in the previous race. Lap one is really a case of just settling in, trying to get closer to the cars in front you're probably not going to be able to overtake them maybe on the final corner you might be able to so at this point here we are just going to whip it forward just a little bit the first thing i'm noting really is that the guy in the lead just swerving across he's very keen to break the toe so these little factors you're always going to try to take them into consideration what kind of drivers are we up against here do they like to defend do they like to work together do they like to overtake do they like to dive bomb all of these things, you're just trying to take them in. And it looks like the yeah the leader quite keen to break the toe, although he doesn't do it there. He just wants to take the corner nice and quickly with the optimum line. So, the stage is set here at the end of lap one. Very close battle between the top three. And as, as, as we've noted before, he's very keen to break the toe. In fact, he actually goes into the wall there, so keen to break the toe. Uh, the Italian goes for the move overcooks it slightly check driver comes back takes the lead again so okay lots of fighting here we're going to go for the the undercut on the way out of the corner we're going to uh, we're going to go side by side here with the italian he's going to try and drive us a little bit wider than we'd like but i'm just going to keep focus keep the inside and move up into second okay so again a crucial phase of the race whenever you get past someone you have to make sure you 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 have a very good next couple of corners to make sure that you stay in the toe of the car in front and don't lose that toe otherwise you're just going to have to start defending your position so this bit here very crucial make sure that we that we have a good section through the s's and try to get back into a, a decent range of the leader as you can see every time you go for an overtake you're always going to lose a little bit of time so you have to be wary about timing your overtakes make sure you do them in a way that you don't lose too much time so definitely into the toe here. He's going to try and break it, but I'm going to follow him exactly where he goes to absolutely maximise the slipstream. Into the final corner, on the brakes, very nicely done. And I felt like my braking into that final corner was actually better than most of the other drivers as I, see, I seem to gain a lot through there. So here, how is he going to tackle this one? He's going to go semi-defensive. He is very aware of that. 
You can go around the outside. I've done it a couple of times. But I'm just aware of just getting run wide there. So sometimes you just have to back out and just be aware that you could get pushed off onto the grass. We still have nearly three laps remaining. So let's not let's not take any too ridiculous chances just yet. Um, so it's a very close battle. We do have to worry about the Italian just behind. So the three of us are fairly even on pace. So as much as I could overtake and go for the lead, I could easily lose a position and go back into third. So things are going to be very, very close at this point in time. Into the bottom hairpin, getting a, that nice late apex, getting a decent exit. I've got a better run than him. Then I looked at the inside. I, I had the momentum there. Not quite enough to go for the move. He covers it off. And we're just going to have to settle behind for the time being. So through the S's. Again, just let's try and get a good exit here. Onto the back straight. You see just how close the Italian is now. Bit of a human centipede coming onto the back straight here. He's just going to edge his way into that gap. And I'm on the outside with the three of us now. Is he going to go for the move? When you're in this position, I try to go for the cut back if possible. And we've managed to do it. But it's really a case now of trying to get the slipstream of the leader. And it's up to him, really, in this situation. He can swerve across as he does to give me the slipstream. And then he comes back again as we head in towards the first corner. Now, again, it's a situation. Can I go around the outside here and get the inside for turn two? No, the Italian actually goes quite late on the brakes. And I'm not really able to fight that one. So we're going to have to concede the position for the time being and uh, settle for third again still two laps to go so no real rush we still have a bit of time here and we could let these two engage in conflict being one of the themes of the video you can see him moving all the way across the track to really desperately try and break that toe this is where things get very interesting into the bottom hairpin as the Italian goes for the move there's a bit of contact on the apex I'm able to get a very nice tidy exit and you see there's going to be three abreast temporarily and then I'm going to move into the lead of the race and I've just got enough momentum to sweep across and take the racing line and we've got a nice double move there done going from third to first in one fell swoop and really the dynamic of the, chain, uh, of the race has changed massively now as I was looking to try to get two moves done within a lap and a half now I just need to try and stay ahead and keep my cool and keep this gap so I've got a nice buffer at this point in time and ideally I just need to try and keep that I'm going to try and break the toe here stay to the left pretend to go right and then stay left so he actually moves across and he doesn't get the full amount of toe that he probably could have done so we're just going to do every little trick in the book to try to maintain our gap in the lead in the lead of the race here with one lap left to go the final lap of the race taking that apex nicely all of those laps of practice really coming in handy at this point in time and um, I must have done maybe 30 or 40 laps of practice which is a lot more than normal for me and it was that kind of consistency and regularity that uh, meant that I actually felt very comfortable in this situation because you might feel that being in the lead of the race in the final lap might be quite nerve-wracking but I just felt very confident in my ability just to churn out some consistent laps and actually the top uh, sorry second and third began to really uh, fight each other quite strongly and it just opened up the gap even further so as you can see coming into the final corner have more than enough of a gap I don't even have to worry about looking behind and uh, defending this position so finally after the fourth race we're going to come through to win it uh, so lots of uh, mayhem and carnage throughout these races set the fastest lap on the final lap and win the race really enjoyable lobby that I mean yes it descended into anarchy at times but also, it was a very fun combination with the Group 4 cars around this circuit. Lots of overtaking available. So it made for a really fun session. I, I, I hope you found it a very fun video. I hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed, then you know what to do, which is do whatever you want. I'm, I'm not going to tell you to subscribe. You, it's, it's kind of a free world, really, isn't it? So you do what you want. Have a nice day. And uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.